Welcome to part two of Is it Biblical to Ask God to Save You? About the only conclusion that I can come to uh, with these people that teach that prayer is at work and you can't ask God to save you is um, they've probably never had a real conversation with God before. And they've probably never even admitted that they were sinners in need of salvation. Um, there are more biblical examples that I'm going to give you in this uh, video, but as I've said in the, in the previous video, um, it is a normal thing when you hear the gospel that you want to talk to God. That's the first thing you want to do. Um, you want to have a conversation with Him. And yet these people will try to discourage that. Um, they'll say, oh, if you pray, that's a work and therefore you're not saved. So how does that whole thing actually work? I mean, let's follow that out to its conclusion, okay? Um, so I come up to a person and say, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and be saved, um, but don't say any prayers, okay? Just stand there and believe. So they go, have you believed? And I mean, what are they supposed to say? I mean, they're not allowed to talk to God, but they'll say, they'll cover it up by saying, oh, well, they'll, you just thank him afterwards. Folks, <laughs> we got all our lives, all of eternity to thank God for his marvelous, marvelous salvation because our lives are bound up in his. Uh, that scripture that I was looking for, by the way, is actually found in um, Genesis 44, 30, and it's speaking of Benjamin. His life was um, bound up with Jacob's. Um, but how does that work? I mean, the person just stands there tight-lipped, say, um, nothing, nothing at all. Have you believed? Uh, no, don't nod your head. That's a work. You just worked, fool. You can't be saved now. So uh, it's utterly and totally preposterous. And the reason why the gospel accounts and other places have to be chopped out of the Bible for these people, uh, wicked hireling heretics like Martin Richling and his underlings, um, is because it conflicts with their newly, freshly man-made doctrine. Um, the fact is that prayer is not a work. Uh, the Bible makes it very clear that um, people could pray on the Sabbath. Um, there are so many examples in the Bible of prayer. And uh, for these people to say that somehow you're working or earning your salvation by praying and therefore it negates it, no. Prayer is asking God to work. See, you trust Him in prayer. Um, like it says in Hebrews, look at Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 2. For unto us was the gospel preached, as well as unto them. But the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. Now, if a person prays to God and it's not mixed with faith, um, to say, Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner, please save me, or uh, however they talk to God in that regard, then uh, the whole point is moot. It's, it's useless because it's not mixed with faith. Okay, um, just like it says over in, oh, let's go back, let's go back to Romans chapter 10. Um, of course, there's a certain pope that butchers this whole chapter, says it's not for us. But, uh, but the righteousness which is a faith speaketh on this wise, say not in thine heart who shall ascend into heaven, that is to bring Christ down from above, or who shall descend into the deep, that is to bring Christ again from the dead. But what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth, and thy heart, that is the word of faith which we preach. Now, who's this writing? Paul, good one. And um, what word does he use there? We. We preach. Good choice of words. See, this is what he's preaching. 
This is why these wicked heretic Bible deniers are going to go right straight to hell unless they repent and really believe the gospel. They're trusting in their own man-made system of works. They're trusting in their own man-made uh, set of rules. Uh, just like the Pharisees, there's absolutely no difference between them and the Pharisees. These are just a bunch of modern-day Pharisees. And uh, people like Martin Richling, who teach a created Jesus, and his little pope, who has one too, um, it took me a long time to understand why a little pope would call him a brother. But I figured it out. They have the same false Jesus. So, the word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Now, what is confessing with the mouth of the Lord Jesus? Agreeing with him. Okay? You're in agreement with God. That is confession. Um, another example of that is found over in... Uh, 1 John chapter 1. It says, If we, notice it's we, confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Now, when does that occur? At salvation. Okay, when it says, If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just, we are agreeing with God that we are a sinner. We are a sinner, we've committed sins. Okay, uh, we are agreeing with God that we're a sinner. And as such, at that point, as unsaved, we are under the condemnation of God. We stand guilty before Him. He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Now, what's an example of that? The thief on the cross. He admitted to, to Jesus Christ there, who is God in the flesh, who was dying on the cross right then and there to pay for the sins of mankind. He, he acknowledged that he was getting exactly what he deserved. Uh, he also acknowledged that Jesus Christ was not getting what he deserved. And he acknowledged that Jesus Christ is indeed God. He said, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. Did Jesus say, mm, how dare you ask me anything? Um, that's a work, so don't ask. But once again, the Bible chopper uppers will say, oh, well, that's... Um, the four gospel accounts. That's why it's so important to them to chop them out and say they'll send you to hell. And yet these same people will say, you're only saved by faith alone in every dispensation, and yet they talk out both sides of their mouth and require the Jews to be water baptized in Acts chapter 2. That's a bold-faced lie. So, yes, there is only one gospel. Man has always been saved by faith alone. But watch out for the Bible chopper-uppers that start... Uh, resting scripture that start preaching from a faulty premise and then twist everything into their own man-made doctrines. It's wickedness. Now, um, God is a God who likes to be asked. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to show you another scripture here. Turn with me over to Luke chapter 18. Luke chapter 18. And let's begin in verse 9. And he spake this parable unto certain which trusted in themselves that they were righteous and despised others. And by the way, these popes and hirelings that do this, um, they're no better than this Pharisee because that's exactly what they do. When they have their man-made pet doctrine and they don't submit to the authority of Scripture, clear examples given in Scripture, and they chop it out and say, oh, that doesn't apply. Um, they have set themselves up as a pope, as infallible and above the word of God. Two men went up into the temple to pray, the one a Pharisee and the other a publican. Now, publicans were hated, okay? They were not well-liked people. Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself, God, I thank thee that I am not as other men are, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even as this publican. I fast twice in the week, I give tithes of all that I possess. And the publican, standing afar off, would not lift up so much as his eyes unto heaven, 
but smote upon his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. See, he smote upon his breast. God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Oh, well, that's work. Okay, you just smote upon your breast, so therefore it must be a work. See, that's the same type of thinking that these wicked teachers come up with when they say that prayer is a work. If you, if you move your lips, if you pray to God and ask God to save you, that's a work, therefore you're not saved. Well, let's see what God says. And let God be true and every man a liar. He smote upon his breast saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Now he petitioned the Lord there, didn't he? I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other. Justification, there you go. You don't get clearer than that. For everyone that exalteth himself shall be abased, and he that humbleth himself shall be exalted. Therein lies the key, brother and sisters. It has to do with humbling yourself. It has to do with acknowledging that you're a sinner before Almighty God and that God alone can save you. And when you open your mouth to pray to Him and believing in faith, He will save you. Now, not everybody's salvation is exactly cookie cutter the exact same way. Okay? You have, for example, um, the eunuch found over in Acts chapter 8. Okay. Now, there's no record of him um, kneeling down to pray, but the man wanted to be baptized. Okay. But Peter, I mean, I'm, not so, I'm sorry, Philip um, didn't want to baptize him until he heard a profession of faith coming out of his mouth. For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh, the Bible says. And Philip said, If thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, is present tense. Jesus Christ the same yesterday and today and forever. He is always the Son of God. And so that is one of those damnable heresies that when people reject Jesus being the eternal Son of God, um, they've rejected Jesus Christ. So his Confession of faith there, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, is pretty much the same as Peter's, who says, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Um, and he commanded the chariot to stand still, and they went down both into the water, both Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized him. And when they were come up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord caught away Philip, that the eunuch saw him no more, and he went on his way rejoicing. Ah, uh, happy new Christian. And he was headed back to Ethiopia to share the good news. Amen. Now, uh, you also have the jailer who knelt down before the apostles and said, What must I do to be saved? And he got the gospel. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Um, a lot of times in today's modern society, you will have altar calls where people are asked to come forward to pray this prayer and you're saved. Um, the problem with a lot of these altar calls is the focus is just on getting people up there to say the prayer. It is not focused on the Lord Jesus Christ and eternal salvation. Um, people shouldn't be guided as to what to say. Um, if people truly want to believe the gospel and be saved, they're just going to talk to God. Um, that's why I am not in favor of some set standard sinner's prayer. Um, God works on the individual. The Holy Spirit does that work, and it's not for us to uh, jump in and do the Holy Spirit's job for him. We are to give the gospel. That's what we are to do. Uh, but to tell people um, that if you pray a prayer, you're not saved, that's wickedness. When there's clear examples, Jesus, um, we've already shared in the previous video um, about asking and receiving. Um, let's look at um, a few more passages here. Look at Psalm 2. Psalm 2.
And verse 8. Ask of me, and I shall give thee the heathen for thine inheritance, and the uttermost parts of the earth for thy possession. You see, God likes to be asked. Asking in faith. John 14. Look at John 14. And verses 13 and 14. And whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. So, if a person really wants to be saved, and they, they've heard the gospel and believed it, and they say, Lord Jesus, please save me, God's not going to hear that prayer. He violates his own word. He would violate his own scripture. And we know that can't be. And whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If ye shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. So, Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner. Please save me. Please be merciful to me, a sinner. Uh, no, not going to do it because you prayed a prayer. Uh, you asked. Folks, do you see how foolish that is? Um, this is a new thing, okay? This is a new wicked perversion of Holy Scripture. And it's promoted by Martin Hireling Richling, um, underling of Satan, and his uh, cohorts in crime. Uh, they are most nefarious in their evil, wicked deeds to promote such uh, evil and to cause confusion uh, for those that would hear the gospel. Look at Matthew 21, Matthew 21, and verses 21 and 22. Jesus answered and said unto them, Verily I say unto you, If ye have faith, and doubt not, ye shall not only do this which is done to the fig tree, but also if ye shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, it shall be done. And all things whatsoever ye shall ask in prayer, believing ye shall receive. So, our God is a great God. And he likes to be asked. And when you ask him in faith for salvation, believing on him, and it's mixed with faith, um, then he will hear. He will hear. He has to. It is in his word. He will hear your prayer. And so, I would encourage you, brothers and sisters, when you share the gospel, don't give people some set standard sinner's prayer. Say, here, pray this prayer, and you're done. Because I've seen that before. Um, Stephen Anderson, I think, had an example where he goes up to somebody's porch and um, goes through this whole long spiel about it. Um, there's going to be people that think they're saved. Yeah, I prayed a prayer with a preacher, and so I must be saved. Well, they miss the whole point. Um, the point is believing on Jesus Christ. He is the author and finisher of our faith. He is the objective, okay? Not the prayer itself. Prayer is just communication with God. So uh, don't let these hyper-dispensationalist, nutter job people twist scripture up. Uh, clearly, God wants to be asked. And um, he wants us to believe on him and trust him for salvation. Because God knows all of his. He knows all that are his. He knew from before the foundation of the world. He knew the ones that would come to him in faith, believing on him and trusting in him for salvation. He knew it. He knew it before he ever created the world. Um, it's the foreknowledge of God. So the Bible says that um, man judges the outward appearance. God looks upon the heart. When that sinner believes on him and trusts in him for salvation, God knows that. And um, he who comes to me, I will in no wise cast out, the Bible says. And that is very true. So until next time, God bless. Take care.